It's a guy jeans podcast. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. My guest today is Ron Polson from the band Pangea. They've come out with a new album and uh, they're promoting it right now. Um, I get into a great conversation with him about the history of the band, songwriting, marketing, all the history of the whole band and it's it's a great conversation and I hope you guys enjoy it. So without further ado, here's Ron Polson. Ron, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Awesome, man. Well, first of all, man, thanks for being on my podcast and uh, I'm super stoked to have you on and talk about music. I'm a musician, if you didn't know, and have been in and out of bands my, my whole life and reading your guys' story is very similar to my story um so i'm really interested to hear how you guys got started i want to hear your songwriting process um this new album that you guys have going on um all that kind of stuff so let's start off like you know uh who's in the band um and what instruments they play and that sort of thing okay well there's six of us now um so obviously i play bass um yeah two brothers Corey uh shank is the keyboard player Andy Shank, his drummer, his brother is the drummer. Uh, uh-huh. Steve Osborne is lead vocals, but he also plays guitar, acoustic, and electric. Uh-huh. Uh, Daryl Massingale plays guitar and sings. And uh, Scott Drawn, now he plays uh, keyboards. He plays acoustic, electric, guitar, and he sings backup too. So right now there's six of us. And that came about because actually of this of this last album, when, when the five of us got out there, we figured out pretty quick that it was going to be kind of hard to pull off what we were doing in the studio live because of all the different keyboards and guitars, as you probably know. You know, you can, <laughs> when yeah. you go in and you layer stuff like that and you try to pull it off live, we, we, we really needed somebody else to help us out. So that's, that's why we got Scott, yeah. Oh, uh, so you added that extra keyboard player. That's awesome. Yeah, Scott plays keyboards. It, it's a funny story because Scott had actually been in the band at some time, so it's not really like he's like never been in the band or somebody new. He's he he was f- very familiar with it, and we, we can talk about that a little yeah, bit if you want. Yeah. Sure. And you guys um, are from? Is it? I want to say this right? Is it Oklahoma? So actually, yeah. the band is based in Houston, Texas. Oh, okay, okay. But I live. Steve and I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. And uh-huh. Scott lives in Beaumont, okay. and Daryl, Corey, and Andy live in, in Houston, kind of like in the Clear Lake area in South Houston. Okay. Did you guys all grow up in the same town or the same area? And that's So it? the five of us grew up in Tulsa, believe it or not. Corey and I okay. actually played soccer together when we were younger, kind of met that way. And, uh, you know, um, I got a bass from my uncle. Mm-hmm. And Corey was like, hey, I'm starting a band. We were in a computer class together in high school. Nice. <laughs> and uh-huh. I was like, uh, guess I'm playing bass. And uh, cool. Andy, his little brother, was in junior high. And he, he got a drum set. And kind of the rest was history. You know, went over to the house. And he met Steve and Daryl at college here in Tulsa. Mm-hmm. And then the brothers moved to Houston. And so that's kind of how we got that separation a little bit. What was your guys' very first gig? Oh my gosh. It's crazy, you know, like I, I, I think about that too, you know, like yeah. our, our history is very similar. Um, you know, I'm on the Dude, West I'm Coast. I'm so old. How am I going to remember that? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it goes back to like, you know, playing parties, you know? It, and, yeah, you know, I'm not really sure. We, we played like there was a pool hall here in Tulsa that had like a bunch of pool tables in it. Cool. It was called Looney's. <laughs> uh-huh. We played that place like all the time. Uh-huh. Um, there was an art studio here called Tucka, like the Tulsa Center for the Arts. We played there a lot. Oh, cool. um, you know, we like you said, parties. We did. Yeah. One of our friends from high school had a like a backyard birthday party thing. And we played that. You, you know, you play. Ash, Adam was his name. We played a couple parties with him new year's eve party where we played for like over four hours you know so i'm sure you've been there too oh yeah Did so you, yeah we you do that you know quite you, you take what you can get <laughs> yeah absolutely did yeah. you guys play covers to at first and then started adding your originals no i wouldn't say that you know uh cory cory has stacks and stacks of notebooks with songs in them and when we first started it was starting on on you know some of the stuff that we've been playing ever since then like your nobody at the helm and winds and those kind of songs that we've played for quite some time 
uh, we did we did learn some covers, you know, to uh, to play those like four hour things. But you know, right now today we could get up and play over four hours of our own music if we wanted to. <laughs> I know, that's awesome, man. Yeah. You, you know, um, it's it's interesting. You know, there's some bands that you know there's bands out there now that are playing you know other people's music and doing the tribute thing and stuff like mm-hmm. that and you know oh, you know gr- growing up in um you know been playing music in the late 80s and 90s like you I did the same thing you know we were lucky enough to be able to play original music and and you know people actually liked it you know right and um so th- I, that's kind of a, a blessing i think you know um huge yeah because yeah. right now it's really hard to find somebody that'll let you play original music right yeah so it's like you just said if you're not in a tribute band it yeah. people don't want to talk to you yeah and, and it's, it's really it, weird it is weird man <laughs> i know and, yeah um so what is the music scene like out there where you're at uh, so in Tulsa, it's kind of it's it's a cover thing in Tulsa. If you don't it, play covers, no one cares. You're, uh-huh. you're basically uh, a jukebox background music, uh, you know, dance music kind of thing. Right. Uh, it's very hard to play. There's a couple of clubs here that do original music, but they mostly bring in what you would call like a, I don't know, a, I hate to say it like this, but a washed up '80s touring act, like like a Faster Pussycat or something like that. Sure. Not to say those guys are washed out, but, you know, because yeah. obviously they're still up there doing it. But, yeah. but you know, that that's the kind of, those original clubs, quote, quote, will mm-hmm. bring bands like that through, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what we find in Houston is, because our guitar player, Daryl, plays in several tribute bands, like a Duran Duran band, uh-huh. a Bowie band, and stuff like that, you know, a David Bowie band. So, yeah, if you, if you, and he, Daryl's even made a, made a comment about this we, we played a show a few a uh, couple weeks ago at the oklahoma music hall of fame in muskogee we played for two hours all original nice man it, it, it went over great a week before that we played in beaumont uh, at an art uh studio that uh, like once a month they'll play like they have like original bands we went over great um so i kind of think i kind of think that uh, in the, the point i was making there was daryl was like you know, people, when they get up and do his tribute stuff where he plays in like a cover band, mm-hmm. he goes, you know, people don't even pay attention to you. Yeah. It's like, it's a weird feeling because people were like, they're paying attention to you playing your original music and they're like getting it and they're connecting on a different level. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing is that, you know, we kind of play to people late high school, early college age. And I think they're kind of hungry for something that isn't like fed to them you know what i mean or good <laughs> they're told that they have to listen to this kind of crap yeah. you know and, yeah and you don't you know there's 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 actually people that get on stage and play their instruments and play original music and it's something that you can you know you can go and listen to and man they were really really into it i mean those kids at that art studio you would to think they found a higher calling i mean it was it was crazy I mean, <laughs> it was really good to see you know if you were to describe your music, um, I, I have an idea of what I'm hearing, um, okay. but I, I want to hear what you, uh, what you guys as a band. I mean, it's it sounds like you guys all have different possibly tastes in music, and you bring it together, and it in that combined different sounds of all the different instruments and backgrounds and stuff like that. You guys have come out with this sound. I would so, I would say that's fair. Uh, yeah. I can tell you, for me personally, you know, my the first guitar I ever bought, I bought a a Hondo Les Paul copy for like two hundred bucks because uh-huh. I thought I was I thought I was Ace Freely and I wanted to be in. Kids, oh yeah, man! You know I mean? Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and, that, and that's how that's how my whole thing started into it until my uncle gave me a bass, and then I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. But but we've always kind of tried to put ourselves in that. You know, I'm gonna throw out some big names here, like Pink Floyd, yeah. Asia. Yeah. Yes. You know, Rush, King Crimson, yeah. UK, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yes. But we also have some stuff that's a lot more, I don't want to say mainstream, but like straight ahead, a lot more like Asia. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. be, I hear that. Can be radio Absolutely. friendly, uh-huh. you know, but still have, be like weird, you know? Mm hmm. I, I like your guys' riffs, you know, that you guys do all together. A lot of times you guys are playing riffs together, which is really cool. Gives it a good Thank sound. Thank you so much. Your yeah. guys' is, your guys is singer, um, definitely unique um has a great voice uh, all the instruments together sound killer man stoke that's a lot a lot has to do with robert you know our producer when, when you oh, go okay. out there he's he's like a six member of the band uh he he's done 
all the records and he's he was in he was in the three in the eighties with Keith Emerson and Carl Palmer. And oh, so okay. he's got a lot of a lot of serious prog ties and stuff. Uh-huh. And uh, Steve Howe, you know, and Jeff Downs kind of oh, close okay. with those guys and stuff like that. So it's uh you know, when we did a Daryl, Andy, Corey and I did before we were Pangea way back in the day, we were we were Artica. And we went into mm. a little studio here called the twenty fifth track with a guy named Walt Bowers. And we cut four songs. And a friend of ours here named Paul Clark sent that CD that we did to Robert. And Robert called us. Well, you know, we were we were big fans of him you know, prior to that. We all had his stuff. And we knew of him from the work he did with Keith Emerson and Carl Palmer. So we were like, you know, just all freaking, like a bunch of little schoolgirls freaking out. You know, Robert uh-huh. Barry called us, man. You know? oh, that's but he, cool. was like, he was like, come out and stay with me for four or five days. Work in the studio. Wow. We'll we'll take apart a few of your songs and put them back together. And he goes, if you guys, if you guys like it, then you know we'll we'll set up a time and come back and we'll work together. And he goes, and if you don't like it, he goes, at least you'll have a pretty good, you know, demo. Nice. And so he gave us a cassette. We went in the car after we took. I don't. It might have been winds. The winds behind the door off of our first album. Took it apart, put it back together, you know, and. And we all sat down and listened to it in the car on a cassette tape, and we were just looking at each other, and none of us could really talk. We were all kind of dumbfounded, and we were like, "All right." So then we went back out and did the did the CD, you know. So it was yeah. to say to say the least. And he's been like a an, another just another extension or member of the band or brother yeah. ever since, you know. And he, and he's an incredible musician. Whatever you think you can play on your instrument, yeah, he'll he'll topple you. <laughs> oh right so, yeah. yeah so when you guys are in the studio and you guys are working on stuff and what is he in the in the sound booth and he's listening to everything and kind of giving you guys some well, encouragement and ideas of how to do things what's he doing well you know how we did it on this one uh we andy has pro tools right so i know yeah. you know about all this stuff being a musician so yeah i would go to houston and pretty much me Corey, and andy would sit in the room and we'd do all the we'd do all the basic tracks right andy had the drums done yeah Corey got some like keyboards and guitars down. I put all the bass down. Then they'd fly Steve in to do the vocals. Okay. Daryl would come in and do guitars. Then once we had it kind of where we wanted it, send it to Robert. He's got Pro Tools, obviously. Pulls it up, listen to it. Give us a few, you know, hey, fix this, do that, change that. I can tell you on the on the very first album, you know, the Rite of Passage, there was probably, there was a lot of stuff he changed, you know. Key, key uh, signature wasn't pushing the vocals enough, you know, so he changed that on us or this part's way too long. Take it out. This part's not long enough. You know, he did, but this time, okay. you know, he didn't, he didn't really, he, he changed, you know, a few things, but not, not anything like he'd done in the past. You know, it's much uh-huh. more, the, the one thing that when, you know, I think probably from reading our story, you know, we had about 20 years there where yeah. this, this version didn't do anything. And the one thing that Corey was like, when we go out, when we do this, it's gotta be all five of us. If, if we didn't have, when we got back together a few years ago in Dallas, he wanted it to be the four of us and Steve. You know, it had to be the five of us doing it together. He didn't want to do it because he felt, Corey really felt like this was the core. You got to have these guys to make it work kind of a thing. That's and, you cool. know, like you pointed out with Steve's voice and everything else, you know, I'm yeah. not the greatest bass player in the world, but it's just something about the way I do it, uh-huh. you know? I mean, in, in that kind of thing, you know what I mean? You could put somebody else in my place, but it just doesn't give it the same feel and sound and the the five of us the six of us now it's weird we're all kind of like we're like brothers i was gonna just gonna say man it's like a brotherhood for sure it is yeah Yeah, and you know that too i mean you get that right mix of guys it's good if you don't get the right mix of guys it sucks you know so (laughs) you know (laughs) have you we've all been there you know i mean I wanted to, I wanted to go back real quick. Um, you said Ace Freely, you know, from Kiss, you know, <laughs> and I, you know, what's mind boggling is the amount of promotion those guys had without social media, without the internet or anything. It was that's mind boggling. I back mean, in the day, you guys yeah. are you guys are in Oklahoma, and we're out here in California, and they're just yeah. as big there as they are here and it's just i mean it's unbelievable man i mean ace freely i I had a poster of ace freely on in my bedroom as well man you know with those big old shoes and everything (laughs) oh i I had posters all over the place my my friend down the street his mom 
wouldn't let him have the Destroyer album because she thought it was demonic looking. Uh -huh. So he gave it to me, uh -huh. and I put it on the turntable, and that was it, man. I was that was it. Yeah. I heard the keys, start the car in Detroit Rock City, and I'm like, damn, that's 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 it. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A funny yeah. thing. A funny thing that you said too was cassette. And so for all, for all those young people listening out there, that's what we used to get. We used to get cassettes, man. <laughs> I had I had eight tracks. I'm oh, so eight old. tracks, yeah, eight tracks. Yeah, and I mean even DVDs now. You can our 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 CDs. You can't. It's hard to find a CD. Right. Yeah. I mean it's crazy. Yeah. And these kids, these kids today, you know, if it's even my children, you know, what, part of the thing of, of why we had some time off, you know, was uh, jobs and school and families and stuff. I have three daughters, you know, and. Uh, okay from 11 to like 24 years old so and, uh -huh. and i've got it one that's 20 about to be 21 in college so i've got uh oh, yeah. you know we had we took some breaks from that but you know if i can't figure something out on my phone i can hand it to my 11 year old and she can fix it and hand it right back to me you know so <laughs> yeah. they don't need cds and and cassettes and all that stuff because they can they can pull it up on their phone Hell, my oldest daughter can pull stuff up on her watch. I mean, you know, it's it's crazy. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> do you enjoy playing in the studio, or do you like playing live better? Both, I would yeah. say both. Yeah. yeah, being being at Roberts, this this last time we went out there, it took me two days to get through everything. But like I said, we had all the pre production pretty much done, so we knew what it was going to be like. Um, and and being at Roberts Studio, it's not like there's no pressure, right? I mean, like, you know, if he, it's just, it's hard to explain. It, That's not nice. Like you're, it's not like there's a big, you know, uh, you know, record company. Yeah. You know, you guys got 10 days to get this done kind of a thing. Yeah. Looming over here or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and if there's something you can't figure out or get through, I mean, he's like the ultimate teacher. We all, we always make this joke, you know, going out to Roberts for two weeks is like four years of college music courses because he can, <laughs> awesome. you know, and it was the same thing with like Corey, who's our, you know, I, w I would consider him our, our band, our musical leader, director, at least, you know, yeah. uh, he's a, he's, he's got a, obviously his degree is in music and he is, uh, he, he's a professor. He teaches music oh, okay. at a college in, in uh, Houston. But if there's anything, and like I told you earlier, I'm not the greatest. I, I have no idea. Right. You know, Corey tabs everything for me. Right. So I can, I read tab. Uh -huh. I don't really read sheet music as well. So and I can sit down and figure it out in like two seconds just by reading the tab. Yeah. And uh, but if there's something musically you can't figure out or can't get, he knows it. You know, I mean, so yeah. you just have to. It's like having a teacher there That's the whole time with you. So it's it's pretty cool. I mean, you know. Yeah. What's it like uh, going back out there after so many years and playing live? It you would not believe how good it feels. <laughs> Did you feel out of shape? No, no, oh, no, good, no. good, good, good. No, when when we decided that we were going to do this and we met in Dallas, then we decided right. about a month later we met in Houston. And you know, there was cobwebs, right? But it wasn't oh, yeah. like it wasn't like 20 years and we're like, "Oh my god, we're never going to get through this." You know, yeah. that first weekend, we got through quite a bit and quite a bit of the harder, older prog kind of stuff, not the easier kind of more mainstream stuff. Uh -huh. And so, then we kind of looking around each other going, "Well, you know, maybe we can do this." And and so the idea at the beginning was was just to get together, learn stuff, and play some shows. And mm -hmm. then at some point, somebody was like, "Hey, man, you know what? If we go to Roberts, I I got some songs. You know, Corey's got some songs. Steve's like, I got some songs. Yeah. And he's like, I got some songs. And all of a sudden, we're out at Roberts doing another CD. You know, so it was like, and we're talking about. I don't know if I should say this, but we're actually talking about doing another one. Awesome. So, because everybody's got more songs. <laughs> That's great, <laughs> so, man. Just keep yeah. doing it. Absolutely. Oh yeah. I mean. Okay, going back, uh, you know, you're playing these uh, parties and college gigs and stuff. When did you realize that you guys had something? Like, at, was it at the parties or was it like some of the bigger shows and people were kind of digging it or freaking out and mm -hmm. loving it? Did you have, was there like a moment where you guys were like, oh, wow, this is, this is actually kind of cool? Probably not live as much as, as when we, we did the first CD at Roberts mm -hmm. and, and put it out. And it started getting like, you know, overseas recognition and stuff like oh, that. Did it? Second okay. home. Yeah. And people started we had a we had a map of the world and we were putting little push pins in it in different colors for different things like, you know, bought this one, bought that one, you know, radio here, you know, stuff like that. And it was and cool. that's when you kinda of, when you kinda of step back and look at it and you're like, Oh, you know. So were you and guys getting for, a, a pretty good following over uh, overseas? 
Yeah, we had a we had a good following, and you know, for whatever reason, you know, obviously, and I'll tell you this, uh, I'm not even sure about why it didn't it didn't work. I guess I probably didn't want to live in Houston at the time, and Steve didn't, you know, and mm-hmm. and so we just kind of broke up. But you know, at no fault of anyone, you know, in particular, just kind of the whole sure. What, what well, you obviously know being in a band and being yeah, a musician, life. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, mm-hmm. and then. Um, but but what we found right now is, and we've actually joked about this with each other, is we think that we're back at least right now to that point that we were because we, we even had somebody this morning, Corey sent me a thing on Facebook. This guy was like, dude, he goes, I've been waiting to hear from you guys from 20 years, you know, and he's like, oh, I can't cool. wait to back kind of a thing. And somebody in New York just bought like all four CDs off the, off the um, website and somebody uh-huh. in Sweden just contacted us this morning and stuff. So, uh-huh. I mean, cool. obviously the kind of music we play, the prog music is bigger in other parts of the world than it is in America. Oh, that's you know, great. Unless you're like dream theater, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but the kind of stuff we play is, is more popular in Europe, Asia. Uh, somebody contacted us today actually from New Zealand too, Corey was telling me earlier this morning. So, oh. I mean, we're getting stuff all over the place again. <laughs> so we, when when you guys played there, uh, did you or did you guys go to Europe and play? No, we never oh. left the states. Oh my god! It was god. all it was all radio uh-huh. and CD and and just stuff like that. Uh-huh. Uh, reviews in magazines and yeah, back in the day when it was print media. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. We had a lot of print media too, you know, and a lot of different like clips and and different kind of magazines and stuff like that. And prog related magazines and things. So, yeah, it was never, you know, we were, if we had the, I guess the time and our, I guess the money probably was a big thing too, to to pack all of us up and send us to Mm -hmm. Asia to Mm -hmm. do a tour. You know, we we would have needed the backing of a, of a pretty good sized record label, as you probably well know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just don't do that kind of thing on your own. Had we done that, we were huge, believe it or not, in like, uh, in like, not Poland, uh, Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah I mean, awesome. We had stuff going Radio Krakow, Poland, and stuff. We had we had songs in rotation and stuff back in the day, right with the first two or three CDs. So uh, cool. Yeah, and it, it's taken us obviously a little bit to get back to that point, but we feel that we feel right now that we're at least back to that point, and, and, maybe a little better. And we just think it's going to keep it's just going to keep going with a lot of help from from people like yourself, you know, and getting the word and out. And obviously, like you said, you know, nowadays. It, everything's on the internet you just click a button and everybody in the world sees it so yeah you know hopefully this time it, it lights a bigger fire that's awesome man <laughs> yeah. and are, are you guys like are you guys tracking like how many albums and and streams and all that kind of stuff like you guys miss yeah Cor- Corey somewhere? does that off okay. the website but i uh-huh. i don't and I, I don't really have those numbers in front of me to be honest with yeah. you but yes we do track that yes Okay, cool. It's so cool yeah. you can do that now, huh? <laughs> oh man, yeah. He he sent me all the time like a, a monthly report of how many how many people have hit the hit the uh, a website and stuff like that. So, yeah, well, very so, cool. Yeah, it's good to know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, back to the songwriting. So, um, you guys, you, you'll have you'll have something, or Corey will have something, and you guys go into the studio, and then. Um, kind of work on the arrangements or that sort of thing and or well, how does that work out like how how do the riffs come about is it like something yeah, that comes to Corey and yeah okay yeah so in the, in the old days like i would say in the very beginning it's kind of the way I, i've been thinking about it was you know Corey pretty much had was the main songwriter and had everything done okay uh, and then so it would be like this is how you're playing it i'll, I'll tell you on this cd uh the latest one on beowulf when we went out to to roberts it was Pretty much everything was tracked, like I said, at, at yeah. Andy's. Not much was changed once we got out to Robert's. Uh, okay. A few things, but not quite as much as in the past. But what I can tell you is, is that for myself personally, because uh, like I said, everything is everything is charted out. So, you know, Corey, will, Got it. Okay. you can put it right there in front of me and I can read through it. I, I'll okay. tell you that not everything on the CD is the way it's charted out because I feel like we were given much more liberty this time to, to be express it our, the way I feel it. Right, like if I if he had all these notes and I didn't feel like it to play all the notes and I played like half of them, that was okay. Or you know if if he had half of it and I added more, it was okay. You know this time around. So I think on this album we each had a little bit more of our own 
uh, freedom to to do to express it how we we felt because when when we started rehearsing after we got back i was playing what was written and kind of looking at each other and i was like man i'm playing way too much uh, i said this isn't what i played on the cd and you go back and listen to the cd and i'm not playing all the notes as it's written but it sounds better with the with the you know more breath in there if you know what i mean or, or space or you know stuff like that so i think we've all grown a little bit you know what i mean That's and Corey's awesome. grown grown with letting us be able to uh you know kind of have our own say a little bit and not be uh-huh. so rigid on you got to play the parts like this kind of thing you yeah, know yeah yeah so, yeah even that- with the old stuff now as we're going back we don't we don't play it a hundred percent like it is on the cd i mean we're, we're free to we change things up a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. or, hey, what if we tried this, you know, or something like that. And mm-hmm. a lot of stuff has changed, you know, and it's it's just for the be- – it's more creative, I think, for everybody. It keeps a little fresher and not yeah. as dull, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it keeps you guys together probably yeah, too. Yeah, not monotonous. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, no, not too many arguments and kind of get the flow going and keep the songs coming. We really coming. don't <laughs> – we're, we're, we're so much like brothers, and I think right. we're kind of so close. We, I mean, our arguments – in the past yeah we've had some disagreements but even sure. more they're just we're all too old and we're all you know just kids and we just want to actually what we want to do is to be honest with you <laughs> is probably like most musicians i just want to be able to to do this and not have to have like a day job and i yeah. just want to be able to travel around uh-huh. play music sure and be able to support my family i don't have to be famous i don't have to be in the rolling stones i don't have to yeah. be in youtube kind of famous i mean yeah the other night we went and saw Brit Floyd. I don't know if you know who they are, but they just they travel the country and they play Pink Floyd. Uh-huh. And those guys can walk down the street. No one knows who they are. I mean, I know who they are because I'm a nerd, right? But but <laughs> but they get up every night and they play out to sold out, you know, arenas and everything. They play Red Rocks every year. It's sold out. I mean, uh-huh. you know, I mean, they just played Red Rocks last week. It's insane. If you get time, go back and watch it. I mean, uh-huh. they're the only they're the only uh, tribute band that signed off by the when richard wright was alive the four living members of pink floyd to, no to be to be pink floyd basically okay and, but but if you you know if the normal person like you know say my wife for existence saw one of them walking down the street she wouldn't know who they were and that's kind of what i would like you know i'd like to be able to travel the country travel the world see places get up every night and play yeah. hopefully touch some people like we touched them you know like i said at the art studio or yeah. you know at the hall of fame and move them in a way that they feel good, you know, take them out of their reality for a little bit, yeah, you man. know, and not have to worry about the pressures of being like, you know, Mick Jagger. <laughs> you yeah. <know? laughs> Sounds like a good mission, man. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your guys' favorite song? Or what's your favorite song to play on your guys' uh, repertoire? Oh, are you, are you just talking about the new album or all, to- uh, all, all together, man? I mean, like you're, you got all these albums, all these songs. What's your favorite song so, to play? M- my favorite two songs, and I'll just tell you because I tell Corey this all the time. Were, <laughs> Do they make it on the set two, list? <laughs> they were two. Uh, one of them, one of them did. The other one, we are we're trying frantically to work back up to get back in the. There's a song oh, cool. on on the first album called "The Fall of Rome," mm-hmm. um, and then there's a song called "The Ship That Won't Come In." And those two songs are probably my favorite two that he's ever written. Not to say that they're the, but they probably are the standouts of the ones that, you know. The Fall of Rome, like the, and the, what was the other yeah. one? The Ship. Okay. I think on there it's The Ship that, that Must Come In. The Ship That Must Come In, okay. Yeah. Okay. But on the on the new Beowulf album, I'll tell you, uh-huh. we're getting, I really like Necromancer. Okay. And we're getting a lot of feedback about Wasape, and that's a song that Andy wrote. And uh, it's kind of funny how that one came about as he's, I was down there with Corey and Andy one day and, and Andy's playing the song. And I don't know if you had a chance to listen to the new CD and have heard Wasape or not. But, I, I've uh, listened to um, a lot of your guys' songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that awesome. song, we're, yeah. we're sitting there and Corey's kind of down on the floor in front of us and Andy and I are at the Pro Tools and Corey's got his laptop out and Corey just looks at Andy and goes, what exactly is this about? And Andy starts explaining to Corey kind of what it's about. And Corey does this thing where he gets real quiet and he starts thinking. And you're like, oh, man, he's coming up with something. You know, he does it all the time. The yeah. whole joke is if you if you play a riff for Corey, you'll come back tomorrow and it'll be a song. And that happens <laughs> a lot, right? So awesome. So he starts telling him what about. And, he, and Corey turns around and turns to Andy. And he's like, you're talking about Beowulf. 
and he and he brings it up and he starts reading it to us and explains it to us and then as we're sitting there you know andy and i are, are looking at him like man and he goes it would be awesome if steve spoke this you know and if he spoke it it actually in like the original language it was written in oh. and that's how that song came to be okay. and it's actually getting a lot a lot of positive feedback andy and i were just talking about that this morning with Corey. is that we're gonna that's one of the ones we're gonna start working up uh yeah, we're we're getting back together here uh, next month, and and for the whole week at uh, in Houston, Andy's house is pretty much our studio, and uh, you you can't walk three feet in there without falling over a drum set <laughs> 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 or something or an amp or something, you know. So, uh, but that's one of the ones along with the the you know the fall room and nobody at the helm and stuff like that. We're going to start working those back up again. Cool. The idea is from here is there we're trying to, to string together about three weeks of little what we call what we're thinking of like like a mini tour like the guys will come up here to tulsa we'll play like a thursday friday saturday we'll go down to beaumont and there's a couple of clubs down there believe it or not like a roxy that actually plays original oh. music so oh, we'll cool. play like a thursday friday or friday saturday there there's a there's a bunch of things in texas called what they call swing dance clubs Oh. And they're they're in towns where colleges are, and once the college season starts back up, we're we're gonna try to get booked into those clubs that first week or two when the kids start going back out because they all go to those clubs, and you know that that we've kind of found that that's our crowd. You know those kids that are in college, like I said earlier, that are that are looking for something. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and we think we're that something, right? Yeah. And then after that, we're, we're gonna try to real hard after we do those little what I call like mini tour things or whatever to, to try to start hitting the festival, the prog festivals, you know, prog stock and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and if, you know, obviously not this year, but you have to apply for those a year in advance and stuff like that. So try to get into those. Cause we think that that would be, that's like our, where people are going to, that's where you're going to hit the biggest amount of prog people like that, that are looking for you, that yeah. kind of music. You know what I mean? So who, does your guys' artwork. It's so cool. There's so many cool little, like your well, your, right. your newest one, your new album with the bear and the, you know, the guy you know, looking a, at the eagle or something. That's a vision that came to Andy one night in his sleep. And he got up and he made a sketch and he sent it to Rainer Kowitz in Germany, who's done all of our artwork. And oh. that's the that's the painting or the rendering from, from Andy's dream. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, and so you and so, he, so you send it to this artist, and he comes up with this stuff. Mm -hmm, pretty that's, much, yep. <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. Send, or send him the idea or the concept or what we're thinking, and that's what he comes up with. Now, if you go to if you go to Rainer's uh, website or or like his Facebook page, he has, and you can get to him through our stuff. Okay, you can get to all. Of, he's got artwork and stuff like that, and it's for sale. And he has different levels of how he licenses it. Uh, you know, like total, like a hundred percent, you know, licensed to you or, you know, licensed for print only or stuff like that. He has oh. different ways that he'll sell it to you and stuff, but That's yeah, cool. he's an incredible, incredible artist. Yeah. yeah. There's some talented people out there, isn't there? It's, it's a, we call it a good <laughs> team. You know, we uh -huh. consider Rainer part of the team. We consider Robert part of the team. Uh -huh. All these people that we meet along the way, yeah. we're just part of the team. Our guy, like our guy that does all of our videography and our, our photographs right now, Mark is a guy that, you know, Corey knows from college down there. And he actually is a trombone player for the for the Philharmonic down there in Clear Lake and stuff like that. But he's an incredible photographer, you know, and we just consider him part of the team. You know, I mean, it's yeah. just one more. Get, and you have to have that, as yeah. you well know, yeah. sound guy and everything else. Yeah. Right? If not, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> If your photographer sucks, nobody's going to know what you look like. If your sound guy sucks, nobody's going to know what you sound like. And, you know, so <laughs> you got to have those guys that you trust and know and know your music, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if people want to find you guys, where would they go and, you know, give give everybody your socials and your website and all that? I, I would start with Pangea.band. Okay. And, and it, yeah, and once you get to there, you can get to everything else from there. All the information's on there. Our stores on there, our history is on there, uh, you know, all of our links are on there, and all okay. that, all that kind of stuff. And you know, that's just the best place to go. Well, Ron, thank you so much for being on my podcast. What a pleasure, man! 
I appreciate your time. Thank you so yeah, it's, much. It's fun to talk to other musicians who have a very similar uh, life and bringing up in the in the clubs and recording and stuff. So I really enjoyed it, man. Thank you so it's, much. It's good to know. It's good to know we're, we're still out there. <laughs> <laughs> still plugging away, man. Right on. Yeah. Well, take care, buddy. And uh, this will be out uh, on Monday, man. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. Talk to you later. Okay, take care. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's a guy jeans podcast.